And welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. Very happy to welcome Nicole Corrette from DVPI, Mm -hmm. Domestic Violence Project, Inc. Yes, ma'am. And uh, good morning to you. Good morning to you. Uh, Nicole, um, we've been hearing all kinds of things. First of all, let's just get this elephant out of the room. (laughs) There's a flood, right? We did. The first week of January, we had a pretty massive flood in our building and uh, displaced a lot of our staff. Um, It it was one of those things that we could have never seen coming. It was kind of a fluke. And so uh, when it happened, we it sustained a considerable amount of damage. And so mm-hmm. it's displaced our staff. We've been really grateful to community organizations who have helped us out in terms of uh, placing our staff places, things like that. But there's a lot of work for us to be doing and to be done still. What about people who are needing to stay there? Sure. What so about shelter residents? Is, shelter is still open for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, we did have to do... Um, a little bit of, you know, our shelter is a confidential location. Right. And so um, because of that, we don't really uh, talk about that part, but we do talk about the fact that our residents are safe and that's our number one priority. So we were able to keep them safe and uh, secure and and fed and (laughs) housed and all those things. Uh, It just it just definitely made doing our daily work much more difficult. Yeah. Uh, What's been done and what still needs to be done and how can we help? Sure. So a lot of things are going to be, help, thankfully, covered by insurance because we are good stewards of the funds that have been given to us and made sure that we had that kind of preparation. However, uh, there's a lot of stuff that's not covered that you don't think about and just daily expenses that we were could have never expected to incur. And like so, what? Um, just things like food, things yeah. like we can't take donations right now because we don't have a donation drop-off. So uh, thankfully, we do have one in the works. But because of that, you know, things that we would normally provide our clients when they leave our shelter or leave our services, we're unable to do that. And so we have to provide that in other ways. And so um, we're really grateful for uh, the financial donations people have given us right now, whether in the form of actual cash or um, through uh, gift cards, things like that. Is there a way that people like right now can stop what they're doing and just go online yes. and, and make a donation? How Absolutely. Do they, how do they do that? <laughs> so I always tell people our Facebook page is the perfect place to find us. Perfect. Um, we put everything out there uh, in terms of our upcoming fundraisers or upcoming events, things that we need right now. Uh, and it's uh, so, of course, uh, we have a GoFundMe page, and it is on there. And right now, we've raised, in a combination of the GoFundMe page and uh, private donations, we've raised a little over $2,000, which great. is great. Uh, we do have a $10,000 goal, but mm-hmm. we're hopeful that that's not going to be too pie in the sky. <laughs> oh, um, no. But it is uh, it is on our page, and I know it's been shared a lot. And so we've had a ton of incredible community support. And so um, I'm sure there are still people out there, though, that would like to give. So and It's amazing when you take a lot of people and just do a each doing a little bit. It's amazing how that adds up. It really 10, is. 10000 is not too lofty a goal for sure. No, it's not. And we raised, within 24 hours, we raised 1000 of that. And so it That's was great. really exciting. And, and, and it's funny because um, people are always asking us, well, you know, I, I don't have... Five thousand dollars to give you. Well, I don't need five thousand right. dollars. Uh, I have things like the GoFundMe page, or just on a regular basis, you can give five, ten dollars, and that adds up over time, mm-hmm. and certainly adds up in terms of for our clients. Um, we also have ways where uh, I have a lot of area businesses that will put a box at the front of their store or their office, and it'll say, you know, DVPI, and this month we're collecting toilet paper, and next month we're collecting personal care items, and so every month we're going to change that up throughout this year, and that's something. We'll be posting a lot on Facebook. So if people are interested in doing something small every month, um, this is an easy way to do that. The kinds of things that you're talking about, every time we make a run to Target, if you just throw one more in your cart, (laughs) you don't even feel it, but it would make such a difference for someone. Well, I always tell people, you know, if you go to Sam's Club and Mm -hmm. you buy the big giant thing of paper towels, just take one pack out and bring it to work and put it in that box. And that is someone's fresh start you know when you're when we're putting things together for someone who's moving into a new home or finding a safe housing situation uh, we like to be able to give them something to take with them and a lot of times there's nothing and so you know they've come to us with nothing and we want to make sure that they don't start their new life with nothing Mm -hmm. and so um, giving them things like paper towels and cleaning supplies and um, shampoo and stuff like that that we use you know if you think about your day right you think about your day from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to sleep um, everything you use it's it's not a lot of stuff, right? But it's things like I brush my teeth, I wash my hair, I you know wash my body. That's 
soap, shampoo, toothbrush, toothpaste. Mm -hmm. Not expensive, but it's a necessity that we have to have, and we take it for granted a lot that we just have it. Um, things like clean underwear, you know, mm -hmm. things like sheets on our beds or pillows, mm -hmm. um, blankets, towels to take a shower, um, toilet paper, <laughs> uh, things like paper towels, or just to clean your dishes. Um, it's very simple things, and so it's very easy to help. Um, you just have to, like you said, grab that extra one or throw an extra thing in your basket. What you're saying would be a very interesting little project to do to just mm -hmm. take a notepad or something yeah. or just record it on your phone or something as you go Absolutely. through your day and everything you've used. Well, if you include your food also, right. include how many drinks you have, you know, if you have a cup of coffee, if you um, have, you know, dessert at dinner, if you have you know, any of those little things that um, just seem so easy, mm -hmm. right? Um, when, because they're within when they're reach. not, yeah. when, and when it's not easy, it really isn't. And yeah. So. It's just a matter of top of the mind. Yep. It's, it's, I think we don't do this because we don't think of it. Absolutely. But just getting it on top of our minds yep. that there's somebody who just needs feminine hygiene products, yep. I would think, would be a huge, <laughs> huge one. Yeah. And again, so easy to give, so mm. inexpensive. Yeah. Well, and a significant portion of our clients, obviously, are women and children, but we also serve men. Mm. And so a lot of times people, that's kind of our forgotten group. And uh, so we always like to remind people things like razors, mm. uh, shaving cream, because both women and men can use that. And so... So it's something that, you know, just it really is. Think of your day and mm -hmm. think of what you use and how much someone else might need it. And I'm thinking, what a neat thing to do at work. Just have a box at work. Yeah. And as people come in, just have some place where your coworkers or folks that you yep. – are going to be seeing throughout the day, you could do your own little fundraiser, your own little project of, of not even raising funds, but of raising things oh, yeah. that you can then just take over to the DVPI. And it's very easy. And we're so grateful because people will do that kind of throughout the year and say, oh, we're doing a drive for this or drive for nice. that. And I love that. And we are incredibly appreciative. I just picked up three giant boxes of personal care items from um, a spa in here in Canton. Um, but what I always say is that I'm happy to come pick them up. <laughs> you know, mm. you don't have to bring them to me. I will come to you. And um, I have a couple businesses, like I said, that have created that box. And so every month we're just going to change what it says. When I come to pick up the old stuff, we'll put the new sticker on and we'll, you know, go from there. And that so it's a really simple way to do it. Uh, it doesn't have to break the bank. You know, it just has to be from your heart and um, simple. A great, great idea. Yeah. Um, we're speaking with Nicole Kretz. She is with DVPI, obviously. How soon before you're able to move into your new digs or you're going to be... Our current Yeah, digs. your current <laughs> digs all renewed. Um, well, it's going to be um, probably about a total of three months. Uh, it's really hard to tell at this point. Uh, things like flooring and walls and things like that that mm -hmm. had to just be uh, all redone. And so it's, you know, it's a, been a traumatic experience as a staff and um, certainly for our clients and our because it mostly affected our counseling agency and so um, all of our counselors have been moved to an off-site location which is awesome because we only missed really two days of clients and so we That's weren't amazing it, and for a group of folks that um who, the people who are coming to see us are, are suffering through trauma and things like that. And so we don't want to add to it. And unfortunately, something like this could absolutely do that. And so being able to say we only had to two day, take two days off, we were able to get clients back in Monday morning was huge for us. And so we've been really appreciative of um, the folks who have helped us out with that. And, um, you know, going forward, looking at that is obviously we want our staff back home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we want right. to see them every day and, and know that they're, because it is, it's hard for us as a staff to not be in the same building. And um, we love each other, right? Yes. And so we're a little family. And so uh, we want to, we want that back together. So we're hopeful that it'll be less than that. But as of right now, that's sort of our projected timeline. And what about losses as far as clothing and different yeah. things that you had supplies of? An extra need for them? That's well, what that means? We're not sure yet. Okay. <laughs> because we obviously always need things. Mm -hmm. um, we have what we call the founding mother's room. And it's somewhere that our clients can go and um, get things that they need from whether it's clothing or items or whatnot. And so um, that thankfully was not really damaged. And so most of the clothing is OK. We did Good. have to do some laundry, but um, but that's OK. That's that's OK. Laundry is easy. We can do that. Um, definitely. Once our donation drop off opens back up, we'll definitely be open for that again. Uh, right now, we just don't have any storage space. And so that's that's really the key thing. You know, people always ask me, well, can we bring our bags of clothes? Can we bring this? 
In three months, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but right now, um, anything more than the things we've been talking about, like the the kind of disposable items, um, we really just don't have room for. Okay. And so, I think consumable right now. Yes, exactly. And okay. and with that being said, um, I had a group that reached out to me today that said we normally bring you know this this and this. Should we just bring cash? Absolutely. Great. Um, it's, it's you know, just for right now. If you want to do whatever you did before or later, that's completely fine, and we'll mm -hmm. absolutely take that. Uh, but right now, it's a matter of just necessities. And so um, that helps us get there. I'm thinking of the state that people arrive mm -hmm. uh, at your doors. Um, is there a, a, a profile of a person? Are they coming with just a shirt on their back? Are they arriving with small children? Sure. Um, what does this young woman look like? Well, a or, young woman, uh, young or man, older, uh, or older, young man. it could be. So, so that's sort of the the myth of domestic violence is mm -hmm. that um, there is no there is no way to describe it. Wow. Um, it can be anyone, any um, background, any culture, any gender, um, any um, income level. You know, it really. Uh, it affects everyone. You know, one in four women will be affected by domestic violence wow. within their lifetime. Um, that number for men is also one in four. It's just not as widely um, spoken about. You know, when we, we think about men, we think about, oh, they always say, well, men are so proud. Well, it's not just that. There's a lot of other things that are, a lot of other factors. Um, women are more believed more often when it comes to things like domestic violence. It doesn't mean that men aren't. It just, it's one of those where um, it depends on who you're telling, right? Mm -hmm. And so we always want people on the other end of that conversation to to listen and to to trust in what that person is telling you. Um, but we know that that's not the case. And so when people come to us, we just try to be in whatever state they're in, whether it's um, they came to us in an emergency, whether they're coming to us for counseling, whether we're meeting them through uh, different uh, programs that we have. We are just trying to meet them where they are. You know, we always talk about how we let the client drive the bus. And so wherever mm -hmm. they need, whatever they need to go, whatever they need us for, that's what we want to do. I'm so happy to hear you talking about that and yeah. and the fact that this is not just a, a woman problem. Nope. It takes a lot of courage oh, for a woman to, to come. Yeah. It would take an awful <laughs> lot more courage, I would yeah. think, for a young man to come in and say, I'm being abused. It's definitely difficult. And that conversation isn't getting easier. And um, I think those of us in the field want it to, right? We want that conversation to be able um, we want it to get easier for those who are being affected um, because we want people to know there's a safe space. You know, we want there to know that there yes. is someone on the other end of that call. We, you know, we have a hotline number, that 24-hour hotline, that um, we get over 4,000 calls a year. Um, and that can be Just anything. right here in our Just area? Just in Stark County. 4,000. Yes. Only in Stark Just County. Just in Stark County, yeah. Um, and that's and it's that number is pretty standard across the board. I will say that we've had – Stark County is – um, got higher numbers on things than I would like it to have, right? <laughs> because, you know, in the field, we want to hope we're doing something good. And, and I think we are, but there's a lot of work to be done. You know, every day we find new things that we're, we want to do better and we want to make mm -hmm. more accessible and easier. And um, we're, we're very aware of what our services are in terms of um, is what we're providing the per what we need out there right now, you know, mm -hmm. and, and if it's not, how do we restructure that and how do we fix that and how do we make it what our clients need? You're definitely in one of those areas of business that you're trying to put yourself out of business. You, right. Oh, love I would to, love to not have a job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I mean, what kind of services are you providing sure. right now? So um, most people think when they think Domestic Violence Project that we just have shelter, which we do. We have two um, emergency shelters, one in Canton and one in Maslin. Um, however, we have a lot more than that. Uh, we do have the 24-hour hotline, which takes calls um, like 24 hours, 365. I mean, it is someone is always on the other end of that line. Um, we have our advocacy programs, both in legal and medical. So if you think about when someone goes to the hospital or someone goes through the court system, both of those systems are really tricky to navigate. And a lot of times, we don't know the right questions to ask. We don't know, um, you know, what's okay, what's not, what we're supposed to be doing, um, who's in charge of that, and who, how we're supposed to get the help we need. And we have advocates, both in legal and medical, that will either be at the court system from arraignments to getting protection orders to uh, going through court cases from step A all the way to Z. And so they're there every step of the way. Um, same goes with medical. So if we get a call 3 o'clock in the morning from the hospital from someone presenting with domestic violence, our advocates will go. And they'll be there and they'll mm. help ask the right questions and they'll just support that client in whatever they need. Um, along with that, we also have our... 
um, outreach and aftercare services. And with that, basically, when our clients leave us, you know, we don't want to just send them on their way and say, good luck, right? We want to right. be that continued support. And um, with that, you know, there's that statistic that hasn't gotten better, but that it takes someone five to seven times to successfully leave a domestic mm. violence situation. So you think about it that way. That's five to seven times where they have packed their bags, they've gotten ready to go, they've made the phone calls, and then not uh, been able to do it. And so on that sixth or eighth time, right, where they were successful, we want to make sure that they're set up to continue being successful. And so our outreach advocates will make sure of that. So when they leave, you know, they're not left on their own. They're not left to figure things out. They can help them find resources, um, locate all sorts of things in the community, um, really just have an extra, that extra leg of support so they don't think they have to go back. Yes. Because that's the thing that we are always trying to um, help them not have to do. Right. Um, in that being said, we also have a program called Transitional Housing, uh, which we have a transitional housing coordinator who will help um, find safe, secure housing for mm-hmm. people. And it's, it's fantastic because a lot of times it's um, people who wouldn't be able to find that on their own. Um, and she helps them, you know, kind of helps them choose it's not you have to go to this place it's here are some options let's see what works best for you where you're Mm -hmm. happiest what part of town where it's safest you know and so they're really all sort of working the whole uh, the whole picture. Yeah. Um, we also have prevention services, which is, we have a lot. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, yes. Our prevention services work in our school systems and in our universities and in our organizations around town, um, teaching things like alcohol and drug prevention, uh, safe dates. We work with at-risk youth. Um, we're in the schools every single day. We yeah. have advocates who are out there or educators who are out there teaching life skills. And mm. um, so it's a really awesome program to have um in attachment, because while there is no direct correlation between drug and alcohol abuse, we can see that there are factors that um, definitely tick back to occurrences of domestic violence. Yeah. And so um, the last thing, we do have one more, believe it or not. <laughs> we have our Renew Counseling and Recovery Service, which right now is the group that's been displaced. And um, they cover everyone. So it's not just um, domestic violence services. Um, there's alcohol and drug addiction. There's individual counseling. We have art therapy, group therapy. Um, we have a lot of we have a lot of things under the whole DVPI umbrella. Oh my goodness! Yeah. I'm just amazed. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of services that most people just think we're just a shelter, and um, mm. that's a huge part of what we do. But it's definitely not all of it. Mm. My goodness, yes. We're visiting with Nicole Corret. She is with DVPI. Got to take a short break here. We'll be back after these words. You're listening to our community.